Hey everyone, we're gonna talk right now about structuring the deal. I'm gonna jump right into it. Check out my screen, Real Estate Lab. Hey everyone, we're gonna talk right now about structuring the deal. I'm gonna jump right into it. Check out my screen. So I've got an analysis pulled up here for a 20 unit property in Michigan. Uh, it's a property I already bought, but I'm just using it as an example for numbers purposes. I wanna show you guys how it works to play around with some of these numbers and structuring a deal. Uh, mainly gonna go into syndications. Um, obviously, we've already gone over a full underwriting tutorial, so you know how to get the analyzer up to this point. Uh, but really quickly, I'm just gonna go through and show you guys how different structures with investors affect returns differently, right? And there's a couple different ones we can try. So. Um, this is mostly going to be for syndications uh, or when you're raising money from investors and you are going to give investors <clears throat> a certain split uh, of the deal uh, or a certain return on their investment. Um, and there's a couple ways to do that. So uh, we're buying this property. We've already kind of, let's say we've locked in a price for $2.2 million. Um, or I'm just going to make it $2 million even. Uh, let's say we've locked in a deal for $2 million even and uh, we want to figure out what structure can we do with uh, the investors uh, that makes sense, uh, but also giving ourselves as the manager a good structure as well to, to earn capital over the course of this deal. So there's two parts we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at the inputs tab and we're gonna look at the investment returns tab here. So in the inputs tab, we have a section here where we can uh, select what our structure is going to be with the investors. I'll zoom in a little bit here. So we have a couple different options. We have the, uh, a way to put in a preferred return. So uh, I believe I've gone over this with you guys. If I haven't, I will recap it. A preferred return is a base rate of return that we want to get investors on their capital while they're in the deal. Uh, this amount accrues if it is not paid over time. I'll back it up in a second, but it accrues if it's not paid and you catch it up at the end. So basically what this means, for example, I'll go into uh, this page right quick. So in this deal, we need $1,225,000 in order to purchase this property. 8% of that is 98,000. So uh, assuming that this property makes, let's expand this, but assuming that this property makes 98,000 a year, it almost clips it in this first year. Basically the first $98,000 will go to investors uh, once it's earned uh, by the property every year. First 8% on this property, gets paid to investors every single year. Um, and so if we enter in a preferred return, what you're gonna see is that first, investors will get that 80,000 or that uh, 98,000. Um, and then uh, after that, there's gonna be a split of whatever's left over. So in the first year, there wasn't any left over. We actually accrued some of it and it had to get caught up in year two, right? So if, if it's not able to be earned, that 98,000, let's say we made 88,000. We still owe the investors an extra 10,000. We're gonna have to catch that up to them the next available year. That's how the preferred return works. The preferred return very typically is between seven and 8%. I've done deals at six, I've done deals at 10. Just depends on what the structure is. So, and we're gonna show you a couple of these different structures that we can do um, and see what that looks like for us as managers and the investors in terms of their returns. So <clears throat> on this page, we've got a couple different sections, guys. We have, um, let me back it out a little bit. <clears throat> we have up top the pro forma summary. That is just taking everything from this pro forma, uh, which is a lot of detail. It's breaking it down into a pretty simple, this is our income, plus our vacancies, gross operating income, operating expenses. Here's our NOI, non-operating and debt service. Here's our net income, right? Uh, and then it's showing us kind of a, a rolling valuation at the cap rate we've selected, which is a six cap. So um, <clears throat> what we're looking at here, all, really the biggest number that matters here for this our purposes of this sheet uh, is the net income. So what this sheet is doing in this next section, investor returns, uh, and the bottom section, which uh, I'm gonna hide this really quick for our purposes. This will make it a little bit easier. Go ahead and hide that. Uh, so we've got two sections here that we're worrying about. We've got the manager and GP returns. And then we have the uh, investor returns. So we're looking at both of these. So uh, this is where uh, investors capital goes. 
uh, and this is what's left over for the manager. And we have the ability to dictate all of that in this section right here. This is it, Just this little section right here. So uh, preferred return. Let's do, let's start with just a very basic structure. Let's let's show you guys from the top. If you're buying a deal on yourself or on your own, uh, by yourself, uh, you're gonna have this is this is what everything's gonna be set to. You're buying a property with no other investors, or you want to see what are the deal level. This is what I call the deal level returns. What are the returns if all of the capital went to one person, the highest level that we can, you know, with no splits to the investors? What are the deal level returns? Uh, set everything to 100% and set the preferred return to zero. What we're going to see here is all of our net income obviously flows through to the investor returns. And then uh, the final item we have is our profits from sale. I set this to a seven year hold, uh, profits from sale. And that is all summarized now uh, in this category. Uh, basically, this cash flow adds up everything from up here. Uh, we really only have this one split though. And then we take our profits from sale into here. And then we have our return of our investor capital, which is a million two twenty five. This is how much capital we've got uh, overall through the uh, course of the investment. Um, and then it's going to do some calculations on this table now. Our internal rate of return here is calculated. So our internal rate of return is a metric that is, what is the growth uh, rate of our capital over time? Uh, it takes into account uh, not just uh, uh, the amount of returns, but it takes into account specific amounts of time. Um, and so that's an IRR. We also have what's our average annual cash on cash return, uh, our equity multiple 3X in uh, seven years, uh, that's solid total return on investment 216%. So these are the metrics that I'm looking at that are the most important. Uh, when I'm going to buy a deal. And so uh, we can start to dice this up from here. So top line, 21 IRR. For me, I'm looking to get investors a 15% IRR, close to a two multiple in five years. So probably in this case, 2.25. Um, and uh, average annual cash on cash, I'm looking to get 8%. So with that said, Let's throw in a couple different structures and see what that looks like in terms of a syndication. So the first structure, the easiest way to do it, no preferred return, just a straight split to investors. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in an 80-20 split. So 80-20 on the income, 80-20 on the income after capital is returned from a refi. That's irrelevant because we're not doing a refi, but I'm just going to throw an 80 there. Uh, investor split of refinance profits. There's no refi. That's also irrelevant. Uh, investor split of sale profits. That's what matters. So... Um, basically, just throwing 80% here across the board. And what that means is investors are going to get 80% of everything. And us as the manager, we're going to get 20% of everything. Straight up, no preferred return. 80% of this net income at the end of the year goes to them. 20% comes to us. The straight split, I call it a straight split model. Uh, no uh, preferred return. That is really good for us as managers in terms of cash flow. Normally, in most cases, you'll see that the uh, investors pretty much uh, earn all of the cash flow every year with the preferred return. Um, and the manager will get next to nothing. But as you can see here, this is our, us as the manager. We're making 20, 30, 30,000, 27, 28, 29, 30, 32. So we're kind of averaging close to that $30,000 a year, um, 28,000 over the course of this seven year investment, right? And when we sell the property, we also do an 80, 20 split on the sale profits. Right, and that's calculated on this page. Sale details. So we sell it for 4.4 4, 4 to six cap. Uh, we have uh, less our investor capital paid back. Here's our profits from the sale. Uh, and uh, we're gonna split that 1.6 million total. 80%, the 1.3 goes to the investors. And 20%, 333 goes to us. So that's 531. So I'm gonna go through and, and write this down really quick. So 80, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make a table because this will be kind of cool to see. 80-20 straight split. We'll do that first. We're going to do um, total cash flow over seven years and uh, profits from sale. And we're going to put in total. All right. So we're going to see here on a couple different structures what it looks like for us as investors. So our total cash flow in this case, let me sum this up. 197, 827. 
And then we're going to show over here, investor IRR. So I'm going to go and record these for each of these scenarios for us guys so that we can see uh, what's going on and what do these returns look like for us in each of these scenarios. So let's go ahead and start here. Profits from sale, 333, 342 total. We're going to sum this up and I'm going to drag this down because we're going to do a couple of these. Investor IRR in this situation was 17.87. So that's pretty good. That's a good return for investors. I'm going to make this a percentage. All right, that's scenario one. So let's go into another scenario. Let's do uh, let's do a straight. Uh, let's just do this for example purposes. 50/50. Let's say you let's say you carved out 50% of the deal's sweat equity, which is really aggressive. The numbers don't work. I mean, they work, but they don't. These aren't great returns. 12% IRR, not a very good return to investors. If there are things that change the market, we encounter certain risks, certain scenarios, certain pitfalls, uh, that, that easily could go sub 10 and we're not in a good place. So I would never do a 50-50 split on this deal. Let's go up a little bit, maybe 70-30. They're still getting above a 2-2-5, they're above eight, and they're above a 15 on this. That's what I'm looking for. So in this case, 70-30 straight split let's see what we're making total we've got cash flow 296 we've got profits from sale 500,000 the manager uh, and the investors IRR is 16 that's still pretty good so it's a balance what we're doing here guys it's a balance we obviously as sponsors want to earn as much as we can on a deal but we also want to earn our investors as much as we can. And the balance is we could give the investors a 90-10, right? You can give the investors, we can give the investors a, uh, let me back that up. We can give the investors 95% of the deal, right? If we wanted to. But what is our time worth? We're going to put a lot of time and effort. It's hard to put these deals together. And for our time and effort, we're going to make $132,000 over seven years. Uh, that is $18,000 a year for putting this deal together. Uh, for me, I would never personally do that. There's somebody out there that might, uh, maybe on your first, first deal for the experience, you might, yes, the investors are making a great return, but at what cost? For you, you're not going to keep spending the time to go and put these deals together and, and, and uh, do all of this work for such a little, a small amount of money. 132,000 over seven years. I, I mean, regardless of what point you're at in the business, I'm telling you that is not a lot for the amount of time that you're putting in. It, it, 132 might sound like a lot if you've never made that much money, but this is over a seven year period. It's not a lot. A couple hundred bucks a month in cash flow. Um, but once you guys get into this business and realize how much you're able to earn on these projects and earn our investors, uh, there's a lot more in it. Uh, than that. So I would say, you know, there's a balance. You don't want to go 95 and you're not going 50 50. We need investors, obviously, are prioritized. Their returns come first. Uh, and that's what I always look at. I'm, I'm almost never looking at what I'm making on a deal. I'm always looking at a deal and um, with the similar structures, you know, an 80 20, 70 30s, uh, these in between structures. And I'm looking at the investors' returns because I know if I'm getting the investors' good returns on those structures, I'm going to make good money. So uh, let's keep going through. So we've got uh, these two uh, so far, um, 70, 30, 80, 20. So we're total making 700,000. You know, that divided by seven years, 113 a year. That's fantastic. Uh, almost 800,000 on this deal in this structure. So I'm going to show you guys now a couple different structures. We're going to go and do a preferred return. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You could do, uh, let's look at an 8% preferred return and an 80, 20. This is a very common structure for starting out. Um, I think it's it's a great, very, very generous to the investors. Uh, I Just for reference, I normally do an eight pref 50-50 split. That's kind of how I operate, eight pref 50-50 split or a straight 70-30 or a straight 80-20. Uh, those are kind of the three main structures that I stick with. Um, but let's, uh, let's go in and let's look at this eight pref 80-20. So let's see what our cash flow looks like. Kind of as I mentioned, with the 8 pref, 
our cash flow is significantly reduced. So 8% pref, 80-20 split over that. So what that means is, again, I think I explained it before, but I'll explain it again. The first $98,000, 8% of this 1.225, they're going to earn 8% on their money first. Anything over that, including cash flow and profits at sale, once they get their 8% up to the sale, uh, get split 80% to the investors and 20% to us as the managers or sponsors. So we're getting 20% of everything over their 8% pref, and then we're getting 20% of the profits at sale, assuming they've been paid their pref up to that point. So let's total this up. We've got 60,000, 563. We've got 333, 342. And that's what the investors are making. The investor returns 19.11. Okay, great. All right, next we're gonna do an 8% pref and we're gonna do a 50-50 split and see what that looks like. So we have 8% pref, 50-50 split. So this is the biggest split we've done so far. Last time a 50-50 didn't work. Remember, if, if, I, if you guys remember, a 50-50 straight split didn't work. In this case, we're giving them eight pref first and then a 50-50 split. So instead of 50-50 and everything, they're gonna first get a base rate of 8%. After that, it's a split 50-50. I know I might be repetitive on this stuff, but hopefully it just drills it in. So in this case, we're getting 151 in cash flow. So uh, we're still not getting nearly as much as we would get in a straight split on the cash flow but look at how much we're gonna make on the back end. Now what matters is, let's go back to investor returns. We're above a 15, we're above a 215, we're above 8%, they're actually getting 9%, so they're getting higher cash flow in this scenario. Maybe I should have tracked the uh, cash flow here, but we're at 15.61. Uh, all right, so, so far, of all the structures we've looked at, um, this is the lowest for the investors, but still meets our thresholds and gives us uh, the most amount. So this is this is maybe a little less balanced towards investors, more towards the sponsor. Um, let's keep going. Let's look at a couple more. Here I'm going to do a 10% pref, 2575 split. So that's 25 to investors, 75 to us. I've done this structure as well. So you're giving them a high base rate of return, 10%. I'm gonna, you're not guaranteeing it, but I'm gonna get you, you know, 10% of your money before I earn anything. You're gonna get 10%. So in that case, I'm assuming we're gonna earn the lowest amount of cash flow or close to it. 98,429. 98,429. And on the profits, 1,250, 034. Oops, one, two, five, zero, zero, three, four. Total, what's our investor IRR? 13.47, so that's not gonna work. However, it may work. And I say this not just in favor of the sponsor, but I say this in favor of the investor that wants a more steady investment. Some investors don't want the risk. They don't want the high risk, you know, that comes along with the potential high reward of these syndications. They might want a more stable and steady return. If you can get an investor 10% a year, we're averaging them 10.38. Uh, maybe I should have gone back through and done this like I just said, but um, I'll put that in here. 10.38, this is the highest, I remember the rest of them, but though this is the highest cash flow that we've seen so far. So 10.38 right there. Um, I'll, we can go back and fill these in, but this is the highest. I believe this one was like 9.37. Um, I can't recall exactly what the other ones were, but uh, they were uh, sub 10. So in this scenario, they're getting the highest cash flow. So you might have some investors that really want uh, a strong cash flow. They don't care as much about the upside, but they're like, yeah, I want to make 10% a year on my money uh, as opposed to 8% or seven or whatever it is. So in this case, they're getting uh, less of the back end. Um, right, this, as you can see, this scenario earns us as a sponsor the most amount of money. I did this scenario once and it's worked out well. Uh, and everyone actually did really well and was pretty happy with the deal. Um, and so uh, it's it's very possible to do this. You're giving them a high pref, so high incentive. I'm gonna take some of the risk out of it. You guys get a high pref. Remember, if we don't make over 10%, investors get all the money. So 
you only make this million two fifty if you really perform well. If you're not performing, investors are going to get that first eight or ten percent or whatever it is. If you're not doing a prep, investors aren't guaranteed anything first. They are just going to get a straight split of whatever comes out, whether it's six percent, eight percent, twenty-five percent total, forty percent, you know, uh, so on and so forth. So, if we're going to scale these up. This is obviously the most advantageous to investors. I personally wouldn't do this structure at this point because I know what my time is worth in terms of putting these deals together. I put a significant amount of time in. Um, I also probably wouldn't do this deal uh, on this particular one unless they were making a little bit higher return. I would do the, I do a prep 50, 50 in a lot of cases, but I try to shoot for a 17 uh, to 18 IRR in most cases. So it uh, depends on the deal. Um, and then I, I would probably be inclined to do something like this. So I think in my case, the most preferable that I would like to do uh, would probably be this one right here. A straight 70-30 split. You get nice cash flow along the way. You also get a decent chunk of profits at the sale. Investors are in pretty good shape uh, right here. Um, and uh, they also, in that case, if I recall, let's, let's, look, let's go and see. See what the cash flow is like. It's going to be a little lower. 8.07. So, guys, this is an exercise that I do on most deals. I'll go through and I'll look at it, and I, you know, I, I'll, I'll compare. I'll say, hey, what are our returns in a bunch of different scenarios? What does it look like? And uh, and 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 that's important because you need to you need to really look out and see hey what what am I doing what structure am I doing is it in the best uh, interest of the investors first and foremost and then secondly how much uh, do I or does my team have as sponsors um, how much do we have the opportunity to make uh, which is also important right that's why we're in this business so um, this is a general overview uh, structuring a deal. Hope that helps. You guys got to see the kind of different types of returns um, for different types of structures. Uh, there, sky's the limit at the end of the day. I mean, if I wanted to go in there and do a 15 pref uh, straight up and give investors nothing over that, right? Investors are just gonna get a straight 15% return on their money. It's not all gonna get paid up front. A lot of it's gonna accrue and catch up at the sale uh, because we're not making 15% a year on this deal, but they're gonna get all the cash flow. You're making zero cash flow, but at the sale, you're going to make $1.3 million, which is fantastic. So like I said, sky's the limit. You guys can do whatever you want on these structures. All comes down to what you think you can raise the money on. If your investors look at a straight 15 pref with no upside, they might be excited about that or they might not. I, I, I don't know your investors. I know my investors and what they like. Um, and I'd say the most standard structure of them all is an eight pref. 70 30 or 80 20 split i do this most commonly uh, i have done this before but i've done i've done each of these structures before and they've all worked well on the deco deal every deal is different some deals are high value add some deals are high cash flow some deals have no cash flow so um, you just have to look at the deal individually and see what makes sense for you your investors and that project and uh hopefully that helps uh, if you guys have any questions as always hit us up uh, and I will catch you in the next section.